to the adventure in Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with our next guest. And man, I am excited about this because there's some cool new music, and it's got a really good meaning to it, and I want to talk about the record label and a lot of things. So let's welcome to the show James Baker from Rorschach's Test. Sorry, can't... Thanks so much for having me today. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. And uh, so... First, I just want to talk about, you know, it's been a while since you guys have been around and uh, you've been doing a lot of other things in the meantime that are helpful to humanity, in, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about your journey getting to this point, to this new music. Well, uh, when things fell apart in uh, 2002, it's really no secret uh, to the you know the fans and and pretty much everyone knew what was going on and I'm only going to speak for myself but uh, I was uh, in the midst of a, a immense battle with substance use disorder and so the first uh, matter of business for me was to regain control of myself and to uh, to get clean and to get sober. And um, so I had to take a a long break and it was a long road with many different attempts and this and that and different uh, treatment methods. And uh, finally, um, I I have found relief uh, for myself in life. And um, upon finding that relief, I decided that uh, there's really nothing better for me to do than to try and help uh, someone who was like me, who who was still suffering. And so, um, you know, I took it as far as I could. I actually went to college again and and got a degree in behavioral health. Um, You know, if if you know anything about my history prior to becoming a musician, uh, I was ordained as a Protestant minister and uh, things did not work out with the church and me when I was a young man. But uh, much later in life, uh, that ordination, that uh, seminary degree that I had turned uh, turned out to work into a position as a hospice chaplain in Phoenix, um, which has just been some of the most transformative uh, moments uh, imaginable in my life, spending uh, the last few days and hours with people who are on their way out of this life experience. Um, It really helps you gain perspective on what's valuable and what Mm. isn't. And um, so I've just been very grateful to to have that uh, going on in the background. I've always wanted to bring Rorschach tests back, especially uh, especially after getting clean and sober, because I wanted to share that aspect uh, of the message of my personal life with with the fan base that we have, it's important for me to let them know that um, as as hopeless as it may seem or as far down as you may have gone, no matter how hard you've hit the ground, um, there is hope and things can change. And so, uh, you know, I kind of had that in my heart and then all of a sudden just all the right elements for a comeback came together. Um, the narcoleptic goddess uh, handed me some lyrics, which, you know, man, I just had to write a song to them. 
By the way, that's the first time I've ever accepted lyrics from someone else. <laughs> nice. Well, maybe that's what you learned too, right? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So, and uh, then running into Michael Bolenbach of Full Well Recording Studios uh, in Phoenix. Um, you walk into this studio, and it's it's like a museum of the recording industry. It's got all sorts of analog stuff, but he also has the most modern and up to date digital stuff as well. And I knew I was home when I walked into that studio. Um, and working for him uh, as an engineer and assistant producer was a young man by the name of Colby Peoples. And uh, we were in the process of tracking Fall on the song, the single that we just released. And um, Mike said, you know, you ought to let Colby have a whack at that guitar line. Let, let's, and I said, oh, he plays guitar. And uh, Mike said, yeah. And I was just thinking to myself, well, I better be, be polite here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is his studio. And I understand he's trying to, to help the kid out and whatnot. So, yeah, I said, okay, sure. Let's, let's hear, let's hear what your idea is on it, Colby. And I had not gotten chills uh, up and down my spine like that since I worked with Jeff Loomis, you know, just absolutely mind blowing talent, not only on the guitar, but also uh, with all the new uh, digital recording devices there are and software, uh, you know, uh, digital workstations. He knows all that stuff like the back of his hand. He's forgotten more about digital recording than most people have ever learned. And he's still a very young man. So all of the, all the elements came together at once. And, and I thought, wow, we're not just going to record a song here. We're going to do an album. And uh, everyone agreed. And so we, uh, you know, we filmed a video for the song to just kind of come out of hiding and say, hey, we're active again. It's a real thing, and uh, we're really excited about releasing the full-length LP, which has the same title as the single, Fallen, um, in October, October 31st uh, of this year. It'll be out. I love that it's going to be out on Halloween. That's so uh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I, that's why I wanted you to tell a story, because I love hearing stuff like that, you know, you're uh, this part of me is radio personality, but there's another part of me, motivational speaker personality. And right. yeah, you, you know, that whole thing of, you know, no matter how bad it gets that, that, that there's still a chance and that there's, you know, there can be light at the end of the tunnel is such a big thing for me because you just never know when things are going to change. And, and, you know, sometimes it takes certain, I don't know, certain magical things to happen, kind of like what happened with you. Just, you know, your, your whole story of starting one way, leaving that, but then it's coming back later to show you, see, there is a reason that you went that route to begin with. And yeah, I mean, being a hospice chaplain, mm. ah, that... That's like one of the hardest and most rewarding things you could do as far as I can, I, I'm concerned, you know, because like you said, you know, you're seeing people at their last moments and that's hard, but then you're getting these revelations from people because listen, we all grew up this way. You're like, what's important in life till we realize how unimportant everything we ever thought in life was important. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And when I, when I took the job, I really didn't know what to expect, but it has been such a gift, um, uh, you know, to hold the hand of someone who uh, may have questions, may have fears, may have uh, regrets that they want to clear up. Um, and this amazing transparency suddenly happens when someone knows they're they're on their way out there's an honesty like i've never seen mm. before there's no reason to put up pretenses or false identities or any of it anymore yeah. um and i thought to myself uh after being with the first uh, patient that left this world 
you know, this is how human beings should be living their entire life experience. You know? Yes. But we, uh, as a motivational speaker, you probably know this, um, the, the most uh, hardcore prisons that a person can wind up in are those that we construct within our mind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially when it comes to things like uh, suicidal ideation, which is something that uh, this album and Rorschach Test really wants to raise awareness on um, mm. with this album. Uh, because uh, regardless of the fact that it's not so much in the news anymore, it's old news, it is bigger, it's a bigger problem in America and the world than it's ever been before. Yeah. And um, I don't think uh, the pandemic helped that very much. It just kind of threw gasoline on the fire. And yeah. you know, if you've ever been in that situation or you know so someone who has, uh, you know, you get into this mentality where you just feel so trapped in the idea that everything is hopeless, that there's no way that whatever mess you're in could unravel. There's no way uh, uh, whatever the situation is could get better. Um, and then if just someone, anyone offers you a different perspective, it can change just like that. Absolutely. hundred uh, percent. And so, you know, one of the main uh, things that we want to really emphasize in, in, uh, in releasing this album that's coming out is um, if you're feeling like that, do not hesitate to reach out and talk to somebody because yes. just that, that conversation could completely change your life. Yeah, no doubt. And then, you know, different people experience it different ways. And so there, there's some kind of coping tools. And a lot of times people don't know what these coping tools are. And it could be anything that could trigger them to think, wow, maybe there is hope, you know, and, and that's the key. Like what you said, they, they, they're in such a dark place that there is no hope that they think that the better way is out. And you know, it's funny. I have my own coping tool that I'm not saying everybody should use, like I said, everybody has their own, what works for them. But my thing has always been, even if I was in the darkest places of my life, what if it's worse? Then what do I do? That's something I've always like said to myself when I get to that really dark place. I'm like, yeah, but what if it's worse? Then what do I do? And that that's really, that those are the words for me that bring me back to, you know, hope so to speak. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can agree. I, I can remember uh, sitting in, in different kinds of, of meetings that were um, recovery oriented mm -hmm. uh, and uh, listening to people say over and over again, something to the effect of, I know that if I go out one more time, if I, if I use one more time or I drink one more time, that's it, I'll be dead. Mm. Oh, and I would always think to myself, <laughs> if you're lucky, if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, there are things that are worse, you know. Um, yeah. there, there is continuous uh, patterns of addiction that people get themselves into, which uh, there is no escape. It's just over and over and over again, a revolving door of pain. And uh, people talk about hitting bottom. Well, every time I would hit bottom, uh, you know, the, the ice would crack and I'd fall down another 10 mm. levels. You know, it's yeah. always possible to go lower to your point. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is um, as quickly as things can, can get bad for someone, they can also get good instantly. Mm. Things can change. And, um, you know, the main thing, uh, Thing that has helped me uh, as a musician and as a fan of music is uh, when I listen to my genre of preference, whether it be uh, industrial, metal, gothic, country, whatever it might be, I try to find kinship with those who are singing about the subject matters that, uh, that align with my life experience. And I do that because in listening to them, I realize I'm not alone. Yeah. 
I've had a lot of people throughout the years tell me that that's how they felt when they heard um, our albums, Unclean and Peace Minus One and uh, Self Will Run Riot. They realized that there were others who felt like them, who had been through things like them. And it caused them to grab onto hope in that moment because the thought came into their head, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not alone. There's, there's lots of people that feel like this. James totally. Baker like this. That's so, right. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I would hope also as, as an older guy now, um, hopefully with a few more life lessons under his belt, a bit more maturity, um, I don't want to just stop with identifying the problem and saying, you know, life hurts, it sucks, blah, blah, blah. I want to go on from there and, and start talking about solutions too. And I don't want anyone to get me wrong. This album's not going to be pumped with sunshine and <laughs> the power of positive thinking. You know, it, I, I believe in that sort of stuff personally. Absolutely. But uh, the subject matter of the album is, uh, is going to create that bridge of empathy for those who listen where they realize, wow, you know, there are others who feel like me. And uh, now we're dealing with, Almost a third generation of Rorschach test fans. I, I <laughs> Does that blow your mind or what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had someone to ask me, when are your T-shirts going to be ready? I, I want one for my grands. My grandson wants one. I'm like, oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you would never think of that. Go, go way back into the beginning. But something you said I really love, too, because, okay, so – as somebody that has always listened to dark music myself, people kind of con got confused of how somebody that was a power of positive thinking person would listen to music like that. But to me, it's just as powerful too. And music is some of the best therapy. And one of the things, like you said, is knowing somebody else, like especially if you're somebody that, has had their own trauma, but also uses the power of positive thinking. Kind of, you don't put that image out there that attracts people that are going to be thinking the same as you, but the music you attract is what happens. So the, the music can speak to you without you having to feel like, you know, you're venting or dumping and, and you can just relate to it and it can be so helpful. I, I think it makes a well-balanced human being to have all sides. And, you know, like you said, if you've been an addict or you've been around addicts, otherwise you may not understand. Both my parents were high-functioning, high-class addicts and serious addicts, you know, and serious mental illness. And so I got something out of that by being the observer of that and experiencing that and being part of that. And, and they get something out of it by being there themselves. But anybody else, it's like funny when I was young, I used to say, yeah, I could never meet a woman that came from a family that had no mental illness and no addiction stuff. Cause they would never understand. And you, you could tell them stuff and they would think you're making it up, you know, type of things, you know? And so that's the best thing about music and your type of music. And What's great is you can tie it all together. You can tie in the beginning of your career, but now tie now coming back with this new music. Like you said, you're not getting rid of the gothic dark part of it. You're just adding your journey into it so that people can relate and they can get hope from the fact that you're on the other side and they can be too. Yes, absolutely. Very cool. So tell everybody how they can reach out to you guys on the web, on socials, check out the, uh, the new uh, video because it's a really cool video and get the, and get the album. Right. Absolutely. So um, best way is probably just to go to our website, which is www.rorschachtest.com. And uh, that's spelled R-O-R-S-C-H-A-C-H. Test.com. Our link tree is there, which will take you to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, 
the other channels that are set up there. And uh, that's also where you'll get the latest news. The release is going to be October 31st, uh, uh, but there'll probably be another couple singles coming out prior to that release. Um, so definitely go to the website and keep yourself informed. And um, real quick, I know we're kind of running out of time, but um, also look for unlabeled artists. I was going to uh, bring that up, yes. This is an exciting new, uh, I'm not going to call it a label, but I'm going to call it a platform that we're really going to unveil in 2025. And the concept behind it is to empower uh, musicians who are uh, members of the club here who, who may have a diagnosis of mental health or substance use disorders. And Unlabeled is going to help them uh, find a pathway to earn a living and um, receive the therapeutic value uh, that music has to offer. So basically what we're going to do is, is connect uh, those uh, members of the uh, community who, who are artistic with the right people to help them bolster their career and, and make a living uh, doing what they are best at, and that's uh, being an artist. So um, we're really excited about this, and uh, we'll have a lot more on it later. Yeah, I do love the whole concept 100%. It's kind of like what I think of in my mind, especially as you were saying what you're saying, that it's like the anti-label label. label. Yeah. <laughs> so, because yeah. the oxymoron of the fact that it's a nonprofit record label, and I love that, you know. Mm -hmm. It's serving a purpose that I think the music community and artists so need and, you know, uh, it is very, very cool. So I, I love it. Uh, and, uh, man, it, it's amazing that we have people like you, you know, and that's what music's all about. You know, there's a lot of gatekeepers out there that a lot of times like, oh, they should just stick to music and they shouldn't use it as a pulpit to say what they got to say. And I say to that, of course they should. Because right. art, first of all, artists suffer a lot through a lot of things. Second of all, if they have that voice, why not use it to help others? Like there's other people, like you said, like there could be one lyric in your in one of your songs that could change somebody's life or make them feel like that person gets it. You know, it's you'll you'll get this one. One of my favorite song lyrics of all time, just because I think it's so ultimately brilliant is by bring me to horizon and mm -hmm. and it's you can't drown my demon i can't drown my demons they know how to swim and when i heard <laughs> that i'm like damn that's me right there <laughs> that's cool yeah definitely well yeah we're we're looking forward to uh the release and um and playing some shows and and saying hi to everyone again and saying uh Hello to, to all the new uh, fans out there. And I uh, can't say thank you enough, Dean, for having me on. And, uh, you know, let's, let's do this thing. Let's, let's, uh, let's create, continue to create awareness uh, about the issues that really matter uh, in our lives personally and as a community. And I appreciate your part in doing that as well. Well, my pleasure and anything you got you need and because what you're doing is certainly, you know, even though you're not, you know, doing what you originally set out to do, you're definitely doing somebody's work, whether it's God or anybody else, you are doing the work to help human beings and giving us entertainment with great music at the same time. So for that, I thank you and thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.